Nice to see you all. Nice to Lovely, see you. very much. Yeah. Was there some bonding backstage? Was it all good? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, good. <laughs> a good boomerang throwing. Thank like you. That. I was so impressed yeah. with that. We well, well, reversed all week for that, didn't yeah. we? It's in your blood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah of course you were. Yeah. Can you really do it? I can throw it. I don't know if it's going to come back. <laughs> so essentially, in your hands, it's a stick. It's a stick. <laughs> <laughs> You in the head, like yeah. it. Now it is April Fool's Day, and Kirsten Dunst, you really, you, you liked it a lot as growing up, didn't you? Oh yeah. Well, it was one. Well, it was one of my cat's birthdays too, so it was a special holiday for me. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it was okay. a good time to tell your mom you're pregnant. Like Sorry? I always would tell my mom I was pregnant. And, it, you know, depending on my age, she was either really excited or very disappointed in me. <laughs> but she falls for it every year. <laughs> Still no joy. Yeah. <laughs> one day, one day. But, hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we must say a big, big congratulations because there is a brand-new daddy on our couch, Mr Stephen Mangan. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This time, was it this time last week? It's exactly a week. It's a week old today. How are you here? I know. You it's, this is a holiday so for me. Yeah, you can drink. I oh, couldn't no, wait. You're not to even drinking. No, I can't <laughs> drink. I'm doing the night shift. Yeah. Frustrating. Oh, that's what. It's lovely. This is number three. Number three. Yeah. So is it all boys now? All three boys. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's. Uh, it was a little surprise. This one. Oh really? A little, yeah. A little pleasant. <laughs> we were. If it was a girl, we would have called it Scylla. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I was filming, we were about to do a take, I got a text from my wife, a picture of the positive pregnancy test with WTF next to it. <laughs> <laughs> the first came up to me and said, can we go for a take? I said, could just, just give me one second. <laughs> went around the corner, went... <laughs> and then came back and hurried on. So, wow. I mean, but you know how it happened. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need to work that out. Yeah, you really need to oh, work really backwards. Do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cos how many have you got now, Chris? Three, I think, yeah. <laughs> You kind of lose track of them, though, you know? <laughs> One was easy, then two and three, and they get busy. Oh, okay. They go in different directions constantly. But now, you've made the choice to bring your children back to Australia. Yeah, yeah. So, were they all born in America, and then you brought them back? Uh, no, my daughter was born here in London, actually. Oh, right. Yep. And then the boys were born in America, and then we moved back to Australia, and, uh... Live there. Now, you've posted pictures online, and it makes me think, was bringing your children back there that wise? Like, you posted this, but, like, that's your house. <laughs> that's, your, that's your bedroom. Yeah, yeah that is, uh, that's, uh, yeah, one of the bedrooms, yeah. Is it one of the children's bedrooms? <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, yeah. yeah. Then, Not since that snake lives there. And then you posted uh, this one as well. Like, is, is that in your house? It is, yeah, yeah. They're better than paparazzi, though, those animals. OK. There's a lot more paparazzi in our life. I would, I would take paparazzi over the would spider you? and the snake. Yeah. You know that snake, the, the, what you don't see, we'd had a couple of drinks that night when we discovered that snake in the bedroom. And uh, <laughs> I, I love Australia. I love Australia, sir. We had a few drinks when we found the snake in the bedroom. <laughs> As you do, it, was, it was a Friday or Saturday night. And, um, <laughs> And we're all standing there going, what is it? And someone's like, it's a brown snake, which can kill you, you know, very quickly. Someone's like, no, it's a tree python, it's something else, it's this. And I just launched into, like, action mode, grabbed it by the tail, picked it up, and everyone starts freaking out, and it starts to kind of coil itself back up toward me, which is getting ready to strike. And I remember thinking, what the hell am I doing? And so I just kind of threw the snake back into the bedroom <laughs> and shut the door. <laughs> and, and we don't go in that bedroom anymore. <laughs> boarded that thing up. We, we have a little mobile with stars and suns on it that just yeah. goes around. Boring! <laughs> 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 because, now, Jessica's just saying you are a lover of the Australian wildlife. Was this... <laughs> yes, I am. But no, because was this picture taken in Australia? Were you with the kangaroo? No, that oh. was actually taken in New York. Oh, it's a... That was a New York kangaroo. It's a travelling wow. kangaroo. Yes. Now, is that a baby kangaroo? That is a baby kangaroo, but what makes me slightly disappointed is it's totally upstaging me on that cover. In fairness, it is. Right? Cool. I mean, look at that model face that it's giving. Oh, my God. It's pretty cute. You both look pretty cool. I'm guessing the kangaroo was quite squirmy. Yeah, I mean, they're very hoppy. Yeah. And, um... Technical term. Yeah, uh, and you know, uh, likes to play, likes to hop around, but was very, very happy whenever I had the bottle because oh, okay. they would do anything for the milk. I feel you'd had enough of the hoppy because there's a picture inside the magazine of you with the kangaroo. <laughs> 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 I'm just like... That's so cute. <laughs> it's, it's so sad because it looks like I'm just like, love me, love me, I love you so much. And it's just like, give me the food. <laughs> <laughs> and they could at least Photoshop the bottle out, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that would look weirder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would like it with rabies. It's dropping <laughs> <laughs> Because now, uh, Kirsten, big animal lover, Kirsten Dunst, as well. Yeah. But now, cats, you've already mentioned a cat. Cats are your first love. Well, I like, yeah, I do like cats. <laughs> I don't know about my first love, but yeah, <laughs> I'm a cat person. Okay, <laughs> and, and you just got a new cat. Well, that cat adopted me. Oh, I see. So, yeah, yeah, new yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, did it wander in? Yeah, he just wandered in, started feeding, and now he sleeps in bed with me every night. So, he just, yeah, he's just <laughs> like, my cat, yeah. It is weird. You would never do that with a person. Like, it's, so, <laughs> it's so specific to animals. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the name of the cat? Tito. I thought it was a boy for the longest time. It was a very, it, usually those orange stripy cats are boys. I don't know why I know this. But, <laughs> um, but then my friend came over and was like, They're, those balls are very small. I don't think that's a boy. <laughs> like, well, girls don't have small balls. <laughs> I <don't> <laughs> I was like, okay, if it's he, she, whatever it is, I'll, I don't care. I'll, still, Tito's a fine name for it. And so, yeah, it's a boy. But, but I think I this is a picture out. of Tito. You can tell Tito is oh, yeah. such a boy. Look at that. That is a boy. Oh, <laughs> Look at the man spread on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a third leg or he's got his tail? <laughs> Definitely a boy. That is a very, very cute He looks like cat. he wants a hug, really. Yeah. <laughs> he wants a beer and some chips. <laughs> is that the way he sits all the time? No, it's, he's just mid-lick. Oh, oh, right. Very clean. Oh, those tiny balls, he was just yeah. making them clean. Yeah. They're small, but they're really clean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we must talk about The Huntsman Winter's War. It opens on April the 4th, which is next Monday, and obviously it stars Chris Hemsworth. You are the Huntsman. Well, Jessica Chastain, you're also a Huntsman. Yes. Or a Hunts person. I'm mm. a Hunts person. That yeah. is a very PC, yeah. politically correct word. But now, you weren't in the first one, so how did you get into this one? Uh, in the first uh, movie, The Huntsman, Eric has a speech about his wife and this former love, and I play that. It's a prequel and a sequel. So I'm Sarah. Yeah, it picks up the backstory uh, of my character with the love of his life, who he loses, who we think he loses, and, uh, and then Ravenna, played by Charlize Theron, who was evil and fantastic in, in the first film, is back, but she has a sister who's equally as, as evil and, and cunning, which is played by Emily Blunt. And she's the Frost Queen, the Ice Queen, and... Uh, she's like our mommy dearest in this movie. Yeah, very twisted kind of relationship. Yeah. She uh, loses her child, so then raises an army, which is us, and, <laughs> but says, do not love. That's the one rule that is bestowed upon the kingdom. So we break that rule, fall in love, mm -hmm. and uh, all hell breaks loose. And, it really does. Yeah. And, there's, and there are there's nods to Frozen, there's nods to lots, got lots of fairy tales along yeah, the way. Yeah, less singing yeah. than Frozen, but... Uh, there, are, there is less singing. Uh, my yes. favourite was your solo, though. Yeah. You want to sing a little bit of that now? <laughs> I'm sure everyone would love to hear it. <laughs> People will be sitting through the movie like... I've gone to Christmas. When does he sing? It's an hour and a half in. Still no song. <laughs> we sang in between. Yes, yeah. did. And is it true that, Jessica, you're in it because Chris was the person who asked you? Well, um... I mean, I loved the first film, and then Chris and I met at the Critics' Choice Awards, and he was so nice, and I said, listen, I'm not interested in doing a movie like this if I'm playing the wife that stays at home while the husband goes out and has all the cool stuff. And he's like, no, 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 you're going to kick some... Am I well, allowed to say ass? No? Ass, yeah. yeah. Ass, yeah. Ass. yeah. In fact, I remember you saying, do I get to kick some ass? Yeah, so I did, actually. We'll make sure of it. And, <laughs> and she does. She kicks my ass in the film and kicks many other asses. Yeah. A lot of ass kicking, if you like that. The well, last time I was here, I think I took you to the ground. You did? You did. Yes, a little I, Krav Maga yeah, action. Yeah, oh. no, I remember. I forgot what it was called, <laughs> but I do remember that. Yeah. I think of it sometimes still. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, you wanted to kick ass, so we've got a clip, and this is you kicking ass, uh, and Chris kicking ass. There's a lot of ass kicking yes. uh, with your co-stars in <laughs> The Huntsman, which is what. <laughs> now, we must, Chris, uh, very quickly mention Thor, uh, mostly so we can show this picture. Sure. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Oh, Look, God. It just looks like a lot of dieting and exercise <laughs> to me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thanks. No. <laughs> but also, now apparently, is this true that people, this is odd, so people come up to you and they want you to tell a specific joke. Oh, they're just going to tell me Thor jokes. Oh, I so they see. Yell Thor lines oh, and stuff. okay. Like, so, um, it, yeah, go. Uh, you know, the, the joke about um, the Thor spends a night with this woman and the next morning he says, I have to tell you who I am. You know, I'm Thor. She says, you're Thor, I can hardly walk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good joke, it's a good joke. 
job, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's, it's good the first time, <laughs> the next 27 times. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. Uh, Stephen Mangan, I would have thought your look is quite unique. You would think that, wouldn't you? You would. I get told I look like everyone's mate. Anyone with curly hair and teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Put a horse in a wig and it's, it's me. <laughs> I get told I look like Elliot Gould, Jerry Seinfeld, Ruth Van Nistelrooy, Mika. <laughs> oh, my God. The donkey from Shrek. <laughs> you know, I have to say, though, we have a picture of the donkey of Shrek and you do look remarkably like it is. <laughs> Character Separated at birth. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, because I kind of thought, oh, someone's exaggerating. Then we looked at the picture and was like, actually... It actually it does, yeah. <laughs> Someone said to me, you don't sound like him. I said, well, that's because it's Eddie Murphy. Of course <laughs> you don't sound like him. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, uh, <laughs> Kirsten Dunst, your yeah. new movie is Midnight Special. It opens next Friday. You know this. I'm yeah, really telling the people. You know yeah, like, I, you're I'm in a like, movie. Yes, you're yeah. right. You'll be interested Correct. to find out. You're in a movie called Midnight Special. <laughs> uh, it opens next Friday. Now, it's... Part science fiction thriller, part sort of dark family drama. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about it in a minute, but to give us a taste, uh, here's some of the trailer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a. Like, I really enjoy this because I have no idea what to expect. And it's one of those rare things. It's a properly sort of original movie. Like, you have not seen this movie before. Yeah, I mean, it harkens back to like Spielberg and mm. Close Encounters and. E.T. and that kind of thing, but Jeff Nichols, who also Jessica worked with on Take Shelter, which I love that film, if anyone hasn't seen that as well, but, and Mud as well. He's just, I think, one of the great auteurs of our time, and whatever, you know, anxiety or his personal, you know, struggles with having a son and everything that comes with being a parent, he just purely puts it into his work. And at the centre of this film is this extraordinary little boy. Mm -hmm. And playing his mom. Do you sort of feel responsible for him? Well, I mean, yeah, of course, it's my child in the film. <laughs> responsible. It's the whole point of the movie. <laughs> but, oh, that. But you meet, you meet my character, Sarah, which, did you say your character's name was Sarah, too? Yeah. Okay, so my character, the other Sarah. Wow, that's some lazy writing. <laughs> yeah. Then, um, well, Sarah, you meet my character, she hasn't seen her son in two years. And she's been excommunicated from this religious ranch. So the rest of the film, is kind of a uh, crusade to get him where he needs to be, these coordinates, let's say. I don't want to give away too much, but it's yeah. basically that kind of vibe. Yeah. And he's amazing, that boy. Yeah, he's a wise, wise little gifted young actor, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I guess, weirdly, you are in a unique position to know what he's experiencing. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, you know, the only thing I did say to Jane was like, Go to normal schools if you can. Like, he's homeschooled, and I always went to, you know, I had prom, I went to the football game, I did everything. So, to me, it's a good balance to be able to go back to school and have your friends always. Yeah, because that time when everyone kind of discovered you in Interview with a Vampire, I mean, how old were you then? I was 10. Mm. Wow. And for you to be thrown, I mean, did you know who the rest of the cast were? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I watched a river runs through it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot of famous people to be. To be in a these movie. are so funny. These oh, no, it's great. good old '90s crimping, right there, <laughs> <laughs> and like long hair on the dudes. Yes. And now yeah. this is lovely. So, has Tom Cruise kept in touch since then? Or... Yeah, yeah. He gives me a cake every Christmas. It's this. We call it the Cruise Cake at my house. It's just <laughs> this coconut cake. It's the best coconut cake I've ever had in my life. It's from Doan's Bakery in the Valley. So sorry, everybody. <laughs> in England, you can't have it. I mean, unless you go to California. But it's really good. And yeah, we get it every every Christmas. Yeah. How fantastic. We're like, all our fans like, cruise cake's here. It's like a major thing. <laughs> <laughs> all devour it that night. We're like, oh, thank you, Tom. You'll love it. <laughs> that's a lovely thing. And I guess that's a kind of tradition that actors give each other gifts. So, Chris, what did you get Jessica at the end of The Huntsman? Yeah, what did you get me, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, how about what did you give me at the start of I The gave you. I gave Chris a candle from Lillabow in which you can actually have the person's oh. name on the label. Mm. Oh. Which and I didn't realise, so I gave it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was awkward, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Super awkward. <laughs> <Just not funny. laughs> You're never getting them for free uh, now. No, no. <laughs> I thought her trailer started to smell funny, so I lent her the candle. Oh, you <laughs> and I never got it. No? No. Yeah. And then I had, I had to tell you, I was like, no, Chris, you can't give me the gift I gave you. Damn it. <laughs> I think you still owe the me a gift. The same candle? No. No, yeah, it was the same one. 
Anyway. Yeah. Does Matt LeBlanc buy you really lovely things at the end of episodes? He does not, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does not. He doesn't buy me anything. Are these... Are the and now he's earning all that Top Gear money. <laughs> Where's my gift, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> So, essentially, Tom Cruise is ruining it for everyone. He, yeah. needs, he yeah. needs to cancel that cake. So, he not only gives presents on rap, but continuously for years after. Uh, years after, See, yeah. See, that's impressive, years. isn't it? Yeah, it is what? impressive. Wow. I've impressive. never done that, except for mm. my parents. <laughs> <laughs> but they are great. Yeah. yeah, they're really good. <laughs> now, before the interview with the vampire thing, of course, you did okay. lots of commercials. You would, yeah. I mean, you were, like, oh, the go-to girl yeah, for commercials. <laughs> But you were, though. Oh, yeah, now I booked the first commercial I ever went out on. It's like, this kid's a star. <laughs> <laughs> did you, and you were tiny. You were, like, three or something? I was little, yeah. Like, three years old, I started wow. doing commercial and modeling and stuff wow. in New York, yeah. But you're going to regular school, so yeah. presumably the other kids, did they give you stick for the things you were in? One, because it was a baby doll that it would put yellow, it would have a diaper you could change. It was like either yellow or brown. And there was a great song that went along with it. So on the bus, I got sang that song for a very long time. And that was really great for me. But I was like, <laughs> I made so much money. <laughs> I didn't realize Good. at that time, it was just going into the college fund. I was like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> no so it won't be traumatic if we show that commercial. I don't care. It's fine. No, it's adorable. I don't care. It's adorable. I look where oh, I am now. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. a tragedy. Yeah, yeah. It's, not like not it's not like you're, you're trapped here. here. It's like, here right uh, now. this is okay. the only thing people <laughs> want to talk to me yeah. about. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, the product is called Baby Uh Oh. Yes, you're right. <laughs> that was a great marketing Baby meeting. Uh -oh. Baby Uh Oh. Very uh -oh. simple, yeah. Yeah, because it's just. It weighs it's, itself. It soiled itself. Oh. Yes. Uh, -oh. uh oh. Uh oh, baby. Uh oh. <laughs> this is like being at home for you, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse at home, though. It's like yeah. actual. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> this stuff wasn't real, it's though. Nothing. It was just colored water. So. Okay, good. So here we are. You're, you're, now, you're not the main girl, you're the blonde friend. In, yes. I think you're wearing a pink top. So okay. uh, here's his baby. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh I haven't seen that in so long. Right. My mom can be so stoked to see that again. That is a bizarre product, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, yeah it's just training us young. <laughs> <laughs> Some good old fashioned feminism right there. <laughs> uh, and now, I come to say, Stephen Mangan, though. In this country, for a long time, you were king of the ads. I, I did you... loads of them, loads. Because yeah. I, I only wanted to do theatre, and you can't earn a living really doing theatre, so I just spent a lot of time subsidising it with commercials, yeah. <laughs> but I advertised for... everything, after eight minutes, you know, chewing gum, beer, holidays, <laughs> uh, the donkey from Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but why... Why were you so castable in that? I think because a lot of those adverts have a very beautiful woman <laughs> and then a characterful man. <laughs> So, who could, who could sell his enjoyment of the product? So, whether it's chewing gum or a cup of coffee, you'd drink it and there'd be a... <laughs> look that they seem to like, and it would, you know, get me a lot of work. Uh, but add no more, ladies and gentlemen, because Stephen Mangan's latest show is Houdini and Doyle. Now, Houdini and Doyle, so, it's running on Thursday nights yep. on ITV Encore. Yep. It's on Fox in the States uh, in May, I think. So. No, because it's a big new show. I yeah. mean, it, it's by the people who made... Is it House? Yeah, yeah. The same, same team, you know, did House. And essentially, it's sort of based on a bit of fact that Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock creator, yeah. and Houdini were friends. They were. They were friends, and they did meet up, and they, they, had, they were on opposite ends of the spectrum when it came to the supernatural. Houdini believed all that stuff was utter junk and rubbish, and he spent half his career going around proving that psychics and mystics were just talking out of their asses. Um, and that only point is you guys in asses because of that conversation <laughs> earlier. <laughs> talking out of their asses. Um, yeah, Jessica. Well, yeah. I'll help you with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and um, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle believed in the supernatural, believed in life after death, and wanted to prove it scientifically. So they did meet in real life and clash. And in fact, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle was a huge fan of Houdini's magic shows. Would go along and say to Houdini afterwards, "What you did up there was magic," and Houdini would say, "Well, no, it was a trick." And Conan Doyle wouldn't have it. He said, "No, no, no, it's magic." Uh, so I don't know if he was crazy or what, but um, <laughs> but it's amazing to me because he created Sherlock, you know, one of the most rational, clear-thinking, logical characters ever created, really. Uh, but he also believed that there was something else going on. And then and this show pits them together and they're kind of solving crime. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now 
your wife is in it. Yes. Which is great, new baby, Bill. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but then weirdly plays your wife. She plays my wife in the show, yeah. It's really bizarre working with your actual wife. <laughs> and she's in a coma to begin with, so she's lying in bed in a coma. <laughs> And she's I'm good. standing at the very end of it. Very good. <laughs> she's actually she's very, very still. Uh, and I'm standing at the end crying. And it's just peculiar. And also mm. kissing and all that stuff is, you know, it's great. But it's good to see her. <laughs> <laughs> we filmed it in the we filmed it up in Manchester and Liverpool for, for, for months on end. Yeah. So it was nice to catch up between comas <laughs> uh, on the family. But also then, presumably <laughs> when when you're making out, just people are just going, oh, there's Stephen and his wife. I know. <laughs> Lots of hairy men standing around watching yeah. you. I, must, I imagine what dogging feels like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, high scale dogging. You know it's is? like yeah. it's... I learned what dogging when I was shooting at uh, the Huntsman. Here, there was a show about dogging. Otherwise, I would have no idea what that is. Yeah, it's not as yeah. It's it's. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a lot of trouble when I get home. No, because, because the Huntsman's filmed in woods. I thought yeah. you were going to say, that. and there was a dogging site. <laughs> <No>. right <there. laughs> One of our unit bases was in a well-known northern dogging car park. Oh, and God. you could see that from the detritus left around. <laughs> and we were filming a night shoot, and every sort of 20 minutes, a car would drive in, and the person would stop and look around and then slowly <laughs> reverse it. <laughs> It's very hard to explain. Yeah. I won't even try. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a YouTube you later. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Just kidding. Just yeah. Kidding. Some sort of firewall will explode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the hotel Wi-Fi will just. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. Let's have a look at a clip. This is you uh, playing Arthur Conan Doyle right. in in Spooky. Spooky Man. After a bit, we weren't giving it our full attention, but Chris now knows what talking is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, very quickly, episodes. Yep. Uh, it's coming back, but is this the last series? It probably is, yeah. We start filming in a couple of weeks. OK. About to spend all day costume fitting. They keep trying to get me in shorts. Mm -hmm. I don't think Brits look good in shorts. <laughs> I look like a scoutmaster who should be on some sort of register. <laughs> <laughs> Aussies are born with shorts on, aren't they? They can handle it, they can we, pull it off. We are. We just cut the legs off our pants. Yeah. <laughs> the Brits, yeah. Now, yeah. now, episodes is made by Showtime in the States and yeah. BBC Two here, so yeah. you can kind of say what you like. Yes, we can. But then, because it's shown on airplanes and in other countries, do you have to re shoot it because it's quite rude some it's of the really time. rude and if you say something if you say fuck then rather than later on having fudge you know <laughs> dubbed yeah. on we just do a, a sort of tv safe version afterwards which is more hilarious than the real thing <laughs> and we did a scene earlier on about because we played two hollywood writers um and we did a scene about we had the word cock in the script and you can't say cock on TV. What other words are there for cock, schlong, dick? So we did this whole scene and then we had to do a TV safe version of the same scene, which is very hard when you can't say the word that you're not allowed to say in the first place. <laughs> so you can't say wiener, can you, on American television? It was that kind of... But you, know. you can. Well, but no, you can. You, can you had to say a word that you could say and pretend you couldn't say it. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Have you guys all done this? The Yeah, yeah. Have... For airplanes, I feel yeah, like. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, just in a later on, you're just adding something into some weird yeah. Oh, so you you so you you're do like, it duck, in... duck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no sense. Yeah. Ah, at all. ah fluff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things that just don't match the scene off. Not at all. You're a fluffing <laughs> idiot. Or... <laughs> yeah. Fluff off. Anyway. <laughs> have you done it? I you did don't... it for Zero Dark Thirty. There's a big line in the movie. It's I, I'm not going to say it because it's probably not allowed. But I'm the. Well, try, it. try I'm, it. I'm the. Oh, you can't say that. Then. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to try to, I mean, what do you do? Like, so we were trying. We, I'm like, I'm the mother gangster who found this place. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It becomes yeah. a comedy after. You're like, I'm it. the mother duck. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to be the same amount of syllables. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, sorry. And it has to but... kind of look like what your mouth is doing. It's, yeah. it's very it's bizarre. Gross. But also, you've got, uh, in your arsenal, of course, you have lots of German swear words. Me? Yeah. Well, my dad's from Germany. What? Oh, That's what? my favorite thing. I German worked with Daniel Brühl. Daniel Brühl. I like Daniel I know, Brühl. I don't he know taught me the him. dirtiest German stuff. I, I just love it. Well, then you know. <laughs> yes, it's the best. Yeah, That's it's the satisfying. best language to swear in. Yeah. 
I've never seen a guest more keen I on a subject. I, I was like, yeah, Jessica. I thought, I thought she liked dogging, but no, freaking <laughs> swearing. That's yeah. the one. What's your favorite? Our shlomp like, is a good one. I like shlompa. Shlompa. And you gotta take your time, shlompa, which means slut. Oh. Or, um, hengst is stallion. But my favorite is, um, come and see here. Come uh, here, yeah. Tonza vein, wait. Tanza eine kleine Vixa, Tanza, Tanza. Which means Tanza. dance, you little masturbators, dance, dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's like German person than I am. I thought it could be so much of That's amazing. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, listen, it is uh, music time. Now, you're in for a treat. This man is a homegrown talent <laughs> whose star is definitely on the rise. Here performing Stronger Than Ever from his hot debut album. Please welcome Raleigh Ritchie. Matt, that is on your new album, You're a Man Now, Boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the album's great. You must be so proud of this. I'm, I'm very proud of it, yeah. It's yeah. been a long time in the making. <laughs> it's excellent. It's excellent. Thank and you. if it doesn't depress you, so, I mean, I'm the wrong person to praise this album, but it's really good. Why? Well, what? you don't want 53-year-old people liking your music. Yes, I do. <laughs> that's, that's career suicide. <laughs> <laughs> label are going contract, tear it up. <laughs> wrong demographic. This is all going horribly wrong. Uh, by the way, if people are... Because people at home might be... I hate to do this, but people might be looking at you thinking... I know that guy. <laughs> you don't live near him. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe you maybe. do. <laughs> yeah. But no, you've been in lots of things. You're an actor as well as a musician. I've, I've, I've worked with Stephen on episodes. Yeah. yeah. You were Kevin, weren't you? Oh, Kev you remember the name? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even remember the name. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. For that music. <laughs> <laughs> I like your album, your music too. Thank you very yeah, much. I'm old as well, so. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is Manolo called. He loves it. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, <was> good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> also, I should say the big thing is Game of Thrones. Yes. yes. So who do you play? Oh, no, you you know. Yes, Jessica uh, loves. Yes. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? You, yeah. Game of Thrones, no. dogging, and German cursing. <laughs> those, those were three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you play, is it Grey Worm you play? Yeah, this season, though, they're, they're changing his name to Sarah. Good, good. Good. But now, but in the show, you don't have a Grey Worm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, do you know what? I think the worm is there, but the worm's oh. feet are there. The back wheels are gone. What would you but say? Does back the worm, wheels. Does back wheels. Does the, the back worm wheels work without the wheels? <laughs> I don't know. What is going I on? <laughs> I think it's all dick euphemism. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Remember what we were talking happening? about? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's right, a grey right. worm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, it's, but no, you, you play a eunuch. I do, yeah. yes. You'd and be then... so surprised how many conversations I have with people that end up becoming all about penis related things. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your beer? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Get that done. Okay, Riley Richie, everybody. Oh, yeah. uh, now, before we go, just time for a visit to the very large red chair. So, uh, who's there? Who's there? Hi. Hello. Who are you? I'm Mia. Mia. Lovely. Yeah. And uh, where are you from, Mia? I'm from Leicester. Leicester. Top of the league. <laughs> Never has a town got less. <laughs> uh, <laughs> are, are you at the show by yourself? Uh, no, I'm with some friends who are from London. Oh, so they couldn't even be bothered to cheer. <laughs> <laughs> your poor friend is in the chair going, yes, sir, and you just go, sit in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to do it. Man, I'm not <laughs> cheering. Are you cheering? I'm not cheering. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, do you live here now? No, no, I'm, I'm on Easter holiday, so I'm just visiting. Oh, and what a lovely holiday destination you've chosen. <laughs> <laughs> for the Brexit. Uh, OK, so uh, off you go with your story, Mia. So I was at a university reunion um, in Baslow, which is up, up north, somewhere in a big country house. Um, we'd not seen each other in a while. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so just having drinks, went to the pub, got a bit Larry at the pub, no pants dance, teddy bear rolls, just standard on a night out. Oh we go God. back, have some <laughs> more <laughs> drinks. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then me and my friend go to get some drinks in the utility room, and it's winter, it's just the winter just gone, so it's really cold. And the door shuts, and there's no handle on the other side of the door, so 
We're like, oh, this is the utility room, no drinks in here anyway. Banging on the door, banging on the door, half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half. They've all gone to bed as soon as we get to bed. We realise that we're stuck in this utility room, it's about minus three degrees, and there's a dog basket and uh, some coats, and we've watched a bit of Bear Grylls, so I think we're just going <laughs> to maybe have to get in the dog basket with my friend's parents' coats all around us, try to make some bed and realised that you have to sort of take your clothes off to stay really warm, because it was really, really cold, Graham, it really was. <laughs> and then... Um, <laughs> No-one's coming, we're banging on the door, we've got no phones, there's no toilet. I really, really need a wee at this point. There's just a bowl, so, with the dog basket. <laughs> you know, that, that happens. Then one thing leads to another in, um, <laughs> in the dog basket, and he gets injured, anyway. Um, OK, there are so many bits of this story missing. <laughs> So you're having sex in a dog basket. <laughs> I'm not. I'm absolutely not. We one just thing led to one. another. What else did that be? <laughs> I just knew you'd make that in your head. And if he gets injured, there's a lot of blood everywhere going on. <laughs> the dog will the <laughs> There's no dog. Pull the lever, pull the lever, Graham. I'm going to pull the lever. <laughs> <laughs> Those people over there, you are not her friends. <laughs> yeah, no, tell that story. <laughs> tell it. Pretty good. The one, the one where a guy bleeds in a dog basket while you're having sex with him. <laughs> Is that the first time, time someone's pulled the lever on the I think the it's top? the first time we've had yeah. Harry Curry <laughs> on the... Just like, too much, I can't. I don't know where this story's going. <laughs> <laughs> Should we try another one? Try another one. Okay, here we go. I this is want to hear this the one. ending. Right. Hello, sir. Hi. Now, Hi, see, now, Hi. they love you. They love you. Hi. Uh, where are you from? Um, I'm from Stanford in the Vale, near Oxford. Lovely. And what do you do, sir? I'm now retired. From? From IT. Oh. IT. <laughs> That's a good friend. They're a good friend. IT! Off you go with the story, sir. Right, well, um, my wife and I decided to take our daughter and her fiance out for a celebration uh, engagement party or dinner at a nice Thameside restaurant. And uh, we arrived at the restaurant and we party of eight, sat down and we started on the champagne for about two or three bottles. And then the waitress came over and introduced herself as Christina. And she said that she was the waitress for the evening and that uh, it was her birthday. So when she disappeared to get the starters, I arranged for the adjoining tables and our table to give her a, round, a resounding chorus of happy birthday, Christina. So she returned and suddenly we all broke into song and wished her a happy birthday and she was very red-faced and embarrassed and disappeared and went to get her manager who came back and he immediately discovered what the problem was because he explained that, well, Christina was, well, she was from the EU and that she was telling us that it was her first day. <laughs> <laughs> and have a go on the red chair, you can contact us via our website at this very address. Uh, listen, before we go, we would just like to say a special thank you and good night to the man who inspired our red chair, the great Ronnie Corbett, who has died at the age of 85. He was always one of our favourite guests here on the show. And we just wanted to send our love and sympathy to Anne and the family. All right, uh, that is it for tonight. So please say a huge thank you to my guests. Ronnie Ritchie! <laughs> Stephen Mangan! Jason Dunst! Jessica Chastain! And Mr. Chris Hemsworth! Join me next week with music from Megan Trainer and a packed sofa of acting talent. We've got Eric Banner, Ricky Gervais, Ewan McGregor, Kevin Costner, and Dame Helen Mirren. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Kirsten Dunst 